If the pandemic has caused one good thing, it is made in the USA iron plates. Today, we are comparing the three top iron plates made in the USA. In this corner, we have the Rogue Fitness Deep Dish Plate. The Rogue Deep Dish Plate is quite possibly the most popular iron plate currently available. It came out around the same time as these. I believe it was second to come out amongst the USA iron plates. It is a standard deep dish iron plate with an e-coat. It's priced competitively. It's made by Rogue Fitness at their Cadillac factory in Michigan. And it's a damn good plate. In this corner, we have the Strength Co. Iron Plate. The Strength Co. Iron Plate is made from a smaller company out of California called Strength Co. They started as a gym, have an absolutely amazing story. It is a fantastic plate made in the USA. And honestly, I think it may give the others a run for the money because I think it's probably the most underrated iron plate currently available. And in this corner, we have the Kabuki Strength Iron Plate. As I've said, the Kabuki Strength Iron Plate is not the best in the world. It's more of an economy plate, but I want to compare it to these other two, both on price, features, and everything else. Made from the mind of the mad scientist himself, Chris Duffin. Let's compare them. Hey guys, this is Coop from Garage and Reviews, and today we are doing a showdown between the three top iron plates that are made in the USA. If the pandemic, like I said previously, brought one good thing, it was that it brought USA made iron plates. It brought iron plates back to our shores. Now, are these the only iron plates worth looking at that are across the globe? No, but these are the three that I think are the most popular that are made in the USA that have come out recently and that we get the most questions on. I've done reviews on all of these in some capacity, but I wanna talk about today about my categories, give you which ones are the best and which ones I think rank higher than others. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first category I wanna talk about is the finish. All of these have some sort of finish on them. If they didn't have any sort of finish, it would just be bare steel and it'd up patina and looking brown and kind of rusty over time, which is cool if you're into that sort of thing and you also like to smoke pipes, drink whiskey, and have a neck beard. But if not, that's okay. So the first one I wanna talk about is the Strength Co. Plate. The Strength Co. Plate uses an eco finish. It was first designed in the automotive industry and it's starting to make its way over slowly, slowly to other industries, including gym equipment. Rogue Fitness is probably the first to use an e coat in their equipment. They started using it on barbells and it's kind of just taken over from there. It's now on kettlebells and other things. So this one uses an e coat. Rogue Fitness uses the same exact e coat. Well, I don't know if I'd say same exact, but pretty much the same e-coat process applied to this. And then Kabuki is using some sort of more environmentally friendly powder coat. I don't know, it's some sort of unique coating. This is what I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give neural marks and the neural marks are gonna indicate where in the end, which one is the best. So I'm gonna give two neural marks to the e-coat. This one's obvious for me. This one, like even off the shelf, came a little bit rusty. It's not a bad plate by any means, but the coating, in my opinion, it's more globby. This one is more smooth. There's some globs on the Rogue plate and on the Strength Co plate. It is a little bit, you know, like uneven, but honestly, overall, they're pretty similar. So give a neural mark each to the Strength Co and the Rogue Deep Dish plate. The next category is the dimensions of the plate. Overall, what we want is an IPF standard plate in height. All of these meet that. They all meet the IPF standard. But the other thing to look at is the width of the plate. Now, deep dish plates are a wide plate. They're called deep dish for a reason. It's a certain aesthetic they're going after. It has positives and benefits, which I'll talk about in a moment, but I'm just gonna measure all of them with my handy dandy caliper here. The strength coat plates are right at 32.0 something, so right around 32. The Kabuki plates, which would be the next thickest, are right around 41, 42 millimeters. And then the big fat boys, you versus the guy she told you not to worry about, which is me, is the 49.8 or so, around 50 millimeters. So the thickest, you know, by not a crazy substantial margin in comparison to the Kabuki, but a margin is the Rogue iron plate. Now, here's the upside to a wider plate. It's easier to hold, it's easier to like pick up, put on the bar, and it looks maybe better to certain people, maybe worse to others. Um, 
The disadvantage is one, you're not able to put as much weight on the bar because you're not you're taking up more space with each with each incremental plate. Not as great. This was originally designed for Olympic weightlifting, so the reason they made them wider is because when they dropped them from overhead, it would hit the platform in a wider surface area. It wouldn't crack the platform. People aren't lifting with these and dropping them overhead anymore, so it's more of a harkened back to a previous time, and they just kind of look cool and have some nostalgia for people. However, the other downside to it is the more space you take up on the bar, the more whip you're gonna introduce to the bar. So because it's farther away from the center point, so if you're not using a stiff bar, even with a stiff bar, you guys that are lifting very heavy, you know, you're squatting about half what I squat, which is probably around 700 pounds for most of you guys, then that's gonna cause a lot of excess whip on the bar because it's a wider plate. So something to be aware of. The thinnest plate is the strength co plate. Personally, I prefer the aesthetics and design of the rogue plate just for looks, but I think for most people, a thinner plate is overall a better plate um, because it's not gonna introduce as much whip. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit harder to hold maybe, but it's still got a lip on it, which isn't an issue. Um, and you know, this one is somewhat deep, not as deep as rogues, it's kind of an in-between. I would say personally, I'd give a neural mark to the strength coat plate for being the thinnest. I mean, I think that's kind of a personal preference, but for most people, I would say a thinner plate will be better for strength training. Next, we're gonna look at machining. The machining of these plates, these are all cast and they are then machined. Well, not all of them, two out of the three are machined. Uh, they basically put them in a cast and then afterwards to dial in the weight accuracy and the look, they machine them. The machining happens on the edge for the rogue plate, the back of the rogue plate, and the inside sleeve of the rogue plate. For the strength coat, it happens on the outside and the inside collar. For the kabuki, it's not anywhere. They aren't machining any of their plates. They're just casting them. So, the, the smoothness of both the Rogue and the Strength Co plate, the machining is similar. I don't really see a benefit to the Strength Co versus the Rogue. Rogue, because it's a wide plate, it has this somewhat invisible center strip here um, where it's not perfectly uh, flat, but honestly, it's such a wide plate, it's kind of expected. Um, there's some ribbing, maybe a little bit on strength code, but not really. Overall, the machining on both of these is equal. However, Rogue is machining the back, and the back is so flat you can cook an egg on it. I know for a fact because I've done it. It just feels incredibly smooth. Um, you know, strength codes isn't you know unsmooth on the back. And again, this is we're talking semantics here, so it doesn't really matter. But you know. I'm a nerd, so I'm gonna geek out on this. So I would say, I'd give a neural mark to the Rogue plate on machining. I think they're machining overall, it's a better machine plate, really because they're just machining the backs. Um, however, is it that much better? You know, I don't know. I mean, I like having the machine on the back, uh, but we're really talking semantics until we get to the price. Next category is weight accuracy. Let me get my handy dandy scale here, and we're going to measure these um, I've measured these in the past on video. I tried to just grab random ones. I didn't want to pre-pick them. Honestly, I don't have a large amount of the Kabuki or the Strength Co. I do have the Rogues. I have a big set of Rogues, probably around 600 pounds or so. These, not as much. However, I just picked randos, um, and we'll place them on here, and we'll see what the weight is. The Kabuki. Sitting 45.8. I would prefer the plate be heavier than the stated weight, not under. That's kind of like standard. Uh, most of these companies are warranting these to two to four percent outside of the stated weight increment. So that's another thing to keep in, you know, in mind. If it's outside the range that they say, then they'll probably replace it. So there's the Kabuki. Put that back up there without killing myself. Here's the Rogue. 45.6, so again, over slightly under what Kabuki's is. I have, I wanna say, I have measured a lot of the Rogue plates and um, they were all pretty close. I didn't have any that were under, they were all pretty close to this and I didn't have any that were over. I've heard of people that have had over and Rogue has replaced them if they're outside that 2% range, so just be aware of that. Then lastly, the Strength Co plate. Ugh. 
44.2, that one's under. Again, I don't like them being under. However, I will say this is from their first round. Uh, I've seen them post other ones, which, I mean, are they cherry picking them or not? I don't know, I can't, I mean, I can't tell that. I'm not gonna conspire to say that. Um, but that one's under. So honestly, they're all pretty much within range. I would say because I've been able to test more rogues, and because like I've heard of people getting them warrantied if they're outside of the stated range, and I haven't seen any that were under on mine, and I haven't seen that many out there, despite these probably being selling the most, I'm gonna give a neuromark to the Rogue for weight accuracy. Now for aesthetics. This one's really hard. I kind of have trouble giving anyone one over the other because this is personal preference. I've heard of people liking others better than others. Personally, I like the design of the deep dish. One, because I'm not throwing 20 plates on each side. Um, so the width of it, it doesn't matter that much to me. I like the way they look. I kind of like the history behind them and that sort of thing. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I would say they all have characteristics that are nice. The Kabukis, I've heard a lot of people really like the look of them. I think they look pretty sweet. I like the three spoke design. The Strengthcos, I think this lip is a little bit fat in my opinion, but honestly, other than that, I think they look pretty freaking sweet. I like the Strengthco logo and they all look pretty cool, you know? <laughs> uh, so honestly, I'd give a neural mark to all of them. I don't think there's a reason to give one over the other because they're all good looking plates. The next one is the weight increments that are available. Rogue is currently selling a 100 pound plate, a 45 pound plate, a 35 pound plate, and a 25 pound plate. Meaning they're not currently, as of the recording of this video, making any other change plates. I will say this, Rogue is going to make change plates for these, tens and fives and two and a half probably. Why wouldn't they? They've sold so many of these, they're probably just trying to go after the big ones that make more demand. Um, so that's where they're putting their focus. However, I'm judging this based upon what the information and things we have today. So the Strengthco makes 45s, 25s, 10s, 5s, and two and a halfs. The Strengthco is a starting strength gym. They believe in like periodization and like, you know, linear progression and slowly adding weight to it. So it makes sense that they would add a two and a half. I love that. Honestly, if you have the rogue deep dish plates and you're looking for change plates, just go with the strength coat plates because they look, they're beautiful. They look great. Here's a strength coat plates. This is a five pound plate. I mean, these feel exactly like the big ones. Like they still have the made in USA moniker. They're just nice. Um, as far as like weight accuracy on the change plates, 4.9, so, you know, right there, 10 pounder, 10 on the dot. Kabuki's, like, they're, they've got the same. They got 45s, 25s, people hate 35s today, uh, 10s, 5s, and 2.5s. And, um, and I'll show you the accuracy on these. The 10 pounder is 10.3, so pretty darn close. And the 5 or 2.5 pounder, 2.5 on the dot. So, the weight range that Kabuki and Strength Co. is offering is both better than Rogue. However, I'm gonna give a neural mark to Strength Co. because Strength Co.'s change plates are absolutely beautiful. I wish they had the machine backed like Rogue's does, um, but everything else about them is just fantastic. I'm a huge fan of these change plates. Uh, I don't know if Rogue can make a much better change plate unless they maybe like, did the back, because these are amazing. So I'd recommend if you've got deep dish plates and you're looking for, for change plates until rogues come out, get the strength coats. Kabukis aren't bad, and I like that they're offering all the different range, but again, they're not machining them, they're using the same finish as these, so. For the last category, it's price. It's the value of the product, which is something that I think most, it's like the biggest consideration for most people. The Strengco plates are the most expensive. Strengco plates, I've got 195 bucks for a pair of 45s, 65 bucks shipped to me, they're in California. However, their shipping is actually lower than Rogue's, which I'm surprised by. So that comes out to about 260 bucks. Okay, so 260 bucks for 45 cents to my door. You know, it gets different and pricing changes as you add different weight increments. So I'm not gonna go all into that. I'm just gonna focus on the 45s and you know, you can go add them to card and figure out the rest uh, for yourself if you're trying to add a specific weight increment for your gym. The Rogue plates are 
155 bucks for a pair of 45s, 73 bucks shipped to my door from Ohio, which comes out to 228 bucks, and then Kabuki's, which are priced at 170 bucks for the 45s and cost 81 bucks for the pair to be sent to my door from Oregon is 252 bucks. So we got 252, 260, and 228. Not a big difference between these. The strength coat is a little bit higher, but not really significantly. And then you got the Rogue at the bottom, which makes sense. Rogue's the biggest company. Uh, they've got the biggest manpower, the biggest buying power, you know, the best shipping rates, which I'm surprised actually their shipping rate is worse than Strength Co's, but that's what we came up with. So price, Rogue wins. You know, I mean, I know Kabuki is an economy plate, which I understand. Um, this isn't the Kabuki level plate, but the price is still higher than Rogue's on the 45s. So, you know, something to consider. So for a Neuromark, I'd definitely give one to Rogue. The, they're the cheapest. They're the best priced out there. Um, they don't have all the other ones, other plates that are available, but they're priced fairly. And finally, the last category is cornbread cookability. Which one can you cook the best cornbread in? Rogue. I, I'm just kidding. I mean, that one would be kind of a light cornbread. That one would be kind of deep. Uh, I wouldn't eat any of them though. You'd kill yourself. Okay, so this is what we've got. Running in, in third place, Kabuki Strength Plate, which I'm not surprised on. It got one, one neural mark. Um, second, Strength Coat Plate got four neural marks, and the Rogue Deep Dish Plate got five neural marks. These are both extremely good plates. Honestly, there's things I like more about Strength Co, and there are things I like more about Rogue, but I think for most people, Rogues went out because of the price. If the price was the exact same, I think the strength coat may be beat them out because the, the thinness for a lot of people, I think does matter. I do like the machine on the back of the Rogues though. So this is what I would say. Rogues number one, they're the best value in my opinion. These are the ones I would suggest to most people. However, if you want a thinner plate, you can't go wrong with strength coats. If you want change plates, go with strength coats. If you want a full set that all matches right now, go with strength coats. I'm a huge fan of these plates. They are very good. Okay, just because they took behind Rogue, the reason they went behind Rogue is because of the price. That's pretty much it. Lastly, the Kabuki plates. I'm not a huge fan of the Kabuki plates. They're okay. Um, I would love to see Kabuki come out with something that's higher quality, but I get it. You know, they're trying to fill a need. There's all the people that need plates. Why not make a plate? They're not bad. Uh, they meet some goals with some things they wanted to do with environmental with environmental factors and that sort of thing. So I think it's pretty cool. However, Amongst these, for most people, these would be my least recommended. Okay, this is Coop from Garage and Reviews. Do you agree with my assessment? Do you think this is the order in which they should be? Let me know in the comments. We'll see you next time. Boom.